two. We are recording. This is the first episode of what do we even call this? I was gonna call it date night news, mm-hmm. and then uh, I I wanted to call it let's get weird, it could be so we could just know. talk about anything. But I think date night news is good. I think date night news where you can get the best alternative news in the world yep. is the is the thing that I'm going to go with. <laughs> I'm Coach Colin, coolest high-performance coach in the world, and this is Mrs. Coach Colin. Hi. There you go. And uh, we're, we're, we're doing some alternative news. I'm, I'm going to do deep dives because my wife here is incredible when it comes to research. And by incredible, I mean she can take notes and I cannot. <laughs> I cannot sit and read and take notes. It's just not in my wheelhouse. So we're going to do deep dives. We're going to talk about world events. But I wanted a day off. You know, I've been taking in a lot of information, a lot of gruesome imagery uh, from France and Israel and all sorts of stuff. I just wanted to take the day off and just, you know relax and talk about mk ultra yeah <laughs> that's what i do on my days off the guys. relaxing topic of mk ultra yeah i just i like to just sit and talk about some mk ultra so we're, we're going to be exploring that if i'm sure you already know what mk ultra is but we're going to explore it and get deeper into it because a lot of people have called it a conspiracy and it's so not mm-hmm. just by going through the amount of videos that there are the amount of notes that she's taken everything that we found out it's it's not a conspiracy. Yeah, it's weird when people call it a conspiracy because it's just history. Yeah. But yeah. it's like also suppressed history. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it was a full blown conspiracy right around the time it ended. And while it was going on, yes. it was just like, come on, guys, that's ridiculous. And then all of a sudden they released the classified documents and everybody's like, oh. When did they do that? You know? Usually they do it 50 years after something. So 1950s? Is when it was happening, right? Yeah, so I imagine it was recent. So then it released in the 2000s, eh? Yeah, but typically when um, mm. things like that are released, they do it quietly. Like, it's not like they announce what's in all of these files that yeah. they release. Yeah, of course. Because I think one of the most recent releases was like 750,000 pages. Wow. So it's really? like, then somebody has to go through it all and find things that matter. I, th- so somebody, that... The the biggest release of MK Ultra data. Was no, that was just the CIA's last declassification. Oh, release. really? I gotta hire somebody to do that. Mm. That would be a thing to like go through all those documents. Yeah. People do, and I think they use like AI algorithms to search for stuff too. Oh, I have a friend that can do that. Yeah. Yeah, I won't mention his name if he's gonna do that for me, but <laughs> I definitely have a friend that can do that. All right, but let's get into it. MK Ultra. What's what's yeah. going on with MK Ultra? And then I'm I'm actually gonna give my take on how I may have MK Ultra'd myself, <laughs> and, and not not in the Illuminati way, in in like a Tony Robbins way. Very weird. Oh well, that's good. Yeah, yeah, very <laughs> odd. Like I had no idea because I never knew that it was connected to to drugs. Yeah. I never knew that. I always thought it was just connected to like, I don't know, showing people wild imagery, torture. Like I just, I never connected it to LSD. Yeah. More like the clockwork orange stuff. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah. what do you got? Okay. Well, I didn't know at all what MK Ultra was before we talked about it the first time and mm-hmm. I started looking into it more. So my base knowledge was about zero. Yeah. Um, but when I was looking into it, I found out a bunch of stuff. So very like base knowledge of MK Ultra is it's that it's a CIA program with experiments to develop and identify drugs like LSD to weaken individuals and force confessions and interrogations. Wow. So basically they were looking for like mind control as well as a truth serum. And even that is kind of misleading to what they're actually doing. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, we just want to force confessions. You guys know, like, you know, anybody we catch from the enemies of the time, which probably Russia, North Korea, probably China or something like that, you know? Yeah. They're like, oh, we just want confessions out of those bad people. But in reality, it was it was different. It was mind control. Yeah. Like their end goal wasn't the worst. Like they just wanted truth and safety for the United States. But sometimes when people do stuff like that, it just turns very bad and then when bad people get involved people who are not moral Mm -hmm. it just turns south so fast well you know like even the to what you just said the truth and safety it's it seems like every like all of the i won't say all but like a lot of 
terrible things that have happened to the U.S., mm -hmm. Canada, and abroad have been in the name of truth and safety. It's true. Usually that's what it's about. It's about, you know, and it's almost like a, it's almost like an excuse nowadays to get, yeah. to kind of just kind of, you know, move aside, you know, truth and safety, get out of the way, mm -hmm. get out of the way, truth yeah. and safety, liberty, get out of the way. And to justify like horrible actions. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. True. But they were also um, doing a lot of like brainwashing and psychological torture. So wow. just not good. They weren't treating people very well. And we'll get into it. But they were like testing on all sorts of people, which is not good. Um, but they had several methods to manipulate mental states, including drugs, like I said, uh, electroshocks, hypnosis and sensory deprivation uh, and verbal and sexual abuse and just full of torture. Wow. So it was crazy. That's nuts. Yeah. That's crazy. Just uh, verbal in the torture part. And and it just says torture, so it doesn't even go into, like, what they did. No, it doesn't go into techniques. You know? But it could be anything from waterboarding to, like, you know, pulling out somebody's nails. I like, was just like, thinking that. Yeah, like, right? Like, like, whenever somebody says torture, I picture, like, pulling out fingernails. Yeah, yeah. So, wild. Wild what they're willing to do. You know what? Just, just uh, I don't know if I should bring it up now. I have a video clip of someone the daughter of a survivor mm. but i guess we can go like what what else do you got let's go into some more okay well something i found kind of crazy was that activities for mk ultra research were carried out at over 80 institutions and it was disguised as research so at hmm. places like universities and hospitals and prisons and pharmaceutical companies they were doing research for mk ultra under the guise of all of these very well-known institutions. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It really makes you wonder because, like, a lot of the times, like, I'm always, like, so happy when I hear that they're doing, like, research with, like, psilocybin. True. Or anything. And yeah, it's, well, like, that's what they were doing then. What poor guy is, like, in a room right now just, like, getting dosed and they're, like, they're seeing what they can do. And yeah. They're, like, you know, like. And there's usually people who are disadvantaged to begin with. Like, a lot of the... Uh, psilocybin research is done on people with PTSD because yeah. it's supposed to help them a lot. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, like if it was like MK Ultra style, and you picture okay, people with PTSD, like a lot of them are veterans, soldiers already. Yeah, the most like broken ones. Yeah, so give, maybe they're thinking like, oh, this person already has a broken mental state, and they have all this training. Give them so, so what much. can we do? Yeah, it's give them, give give them, give them ten grams worth. Let's yeah. see what happens. Like, cause like a hero dose is like five grams. So they're just yeah. like, give him triple. So let's just see what happens. Yeah. Let's just talk to him. Let's see how strong he gets if we scare him. Oh my gosh. Right? Like all sorts of weird stuff. And, and then, then you know all their triggers to scare them too. Exactly. And then at the end, they're just, they release to the public. They're like, helps with depression, guys. <laughs> we're, we're doing well. Oh my gosh. Not to, not to, not to downplay psilocybin though. I love psilocybin, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. What what else? What else? Oh, oh, you know what? Real quick, I just want to go into a video that I saw because I didn't know the reason that they had all this LSD. And that was a very telling thing to me. The reasoning of why they had it. And I just want to play this clip really, really quick. If you don't realize this, when you were doing your research and I like they purchased all of it. Yeah, that's crazy. The U.S. government purchased all of it. So they were just trying to get it off the streets and they just... Well, as soon as they figured out, like, you know, like we got, we might have liquid gold here or we might have something that can, you know, either propel a population into some kind of rebellion or can, like, make them, like, you know, terrible and, like, break down a whole country. It's like, we need all of this. We mm -hmm. need to understand all of this before you guys do anything with it. That's crazy. And they bought all of it <laughs> and you know it's like it's funny because anytime you talk to old psychedelic people right because i've talked to a few i have like a lot of experience with psychedelics um they always say like anything that you're getting is like not the real thing like they talk about a time where it was like the real thing mm -hmm. and then they were like and then it was gone like i think her name is uh susan sarandon some yeah. famous woman, she like, yeah, she like did LSD with like Timothy Leary, like, like and Timothy Leary is like a huge, huge icon towards psychedelics, big scientist. 
And she's like, that that stuff doesn't exist anymore. Hmm. Because as soon as they bought it all, apparently, because I didn't know, but they bought it all and then it was just off the streets completely. And then whoever was making it wasn't making it from the actual stuff. Interesting. They were just like, you know, following formulas and making yeah. it the best they could. But like mimicking. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't quite the same. Yeah. Wow. Which is sad because I've done it before and I'm like, oh. I thought I was doing the thing, but I guess not. Huh. <laughs> but that video was interesting, too, because it said at the end that um, he was watching through a two-way mirror and hookers were bringing in Johns and they were getting dosed. Yeah. And I had some research about that, too. They were doing that a lot in San Francisco. So they would set up like brothels, like fake brothels that were run by the CIA. <sighs> Wow. So that when the the guys would come in, they would they would do the same thing and just watch them and see how they respond because they knew they could dose these guys because they're coming to a brothel. They're not going to talk about their bad experience, especially back then. Yeah, like you couldn't be seen as some degenerate that went to a. You have your no. wife, your yeah. kids. Yeah, and you know? those, everybody wore button down shirts and they were yeah. all proper and everything. <laughs> Take off your hat at the brothel. Yeah, exactly. Good day to you, madam. Yeah. <laughs> to the madam. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But they also had um, people like heroin addicts, and they were bribed into being uh, subjects for MK Ultra for like testing for LSD. Wow. Um, and they would offer them more heroin in payment. Jeez. So not only did the U.S. government have stores of LSD, but they had stores of heroin to give out as payment. Wow. Jeez. That's amazing. Yeah, right? What That's else do they have? You, you got you to honestly, like, you know, bad actions, but USA. It's, <laughs> it's like one of the, like, they, they went, like, when they made this place, the USA, they, they went all out. They oh were like, gosh. we're going to have money. We're going to do this. We're going to figure out mind control. And you got to think, like, they were fighting to, like, be a superpower. Yeah. You're right. So it was like, we're going to do anything. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, what does he want as payment? Like, we'll give him whatever. We'll give him a person. Does he want a person? Oh, my God. No, he doesn't want a person. Okay. Give him this then. Yeah. Like, they just, they needed to be on top. And they, like, they couldn't, I, I guess, back, again, back then, like, the the, the enemy was Russia. And yeah. I guess today as well. Hmm. Um, You know, like, they couldn't afford for Russia to, like, figure this out first. Yeah. They just couldn't afford it. Like everybody says, everything was like a race. It was like first yes. person space, yeah. like everything. Like they had to be on top of everything. Yeah. But that's when like, so it was full like Cold War going on. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stuff about like sleeper agents and like double agents and things like that. Like Russians who were disguised as Americans. Oh, really? Yeah. In America? Yes. So they were pretending to be Americans, but they were actually Russian spies. Wow. So I think a lot of why MK Ultra even was developed was to like catch people like that and find find out like what was going on. That's true. You give somebody who's like disguising themselves as American, you give them like a dose of LSD. And their Russian accent comes oh, out. Oh, all of that stuff. <laughs> come out. Especially if you're if you're scaring them too. Yeah. That's oh, not yeah. Steve, it's Yuri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything comes out. Everything. You know, they always say, um, they always say, like, in, in throes of passion, like, your natural tongue will come out. Hmm. You know, like, if you're if you're having sex or whatever, like, your natural, like, how you actually speak or, like, your actual accent, your actual language will come out. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're, like, with a, a, a girl who's from Mexico and she's like, hi, my name's Gloria. And, it's like, English is her second language. She'll, like, she'll just be. Drop it. Yeah. She'll yeah. It'll just be, like, Yeah, go Spanish. back to your default settings. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, like, everything's, like turned off i guess you could say yeah you know that's why she speaks russian <laughs> <when we're together. laughs> that that must be it no, i don't know the only word i know is like i don't even know actually duh, <laughs> duh. <laughs> I, I know, know i know some words i grew up around russians <laughs> So I know some words, but they're all swear words. I don't know. I don't know if this algorithm will pick up on like Russian swear words. So I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I keep getting like limited my my ad revenue. They keep taking it away from mm. me because of my videos. Well, you know, just a side note. I used the name James O'Keefe and they were like, no, really? I took it away. I, I read I retitled something just fun times and they're like, good. Oh, my God. And then I put it back and now it's been good. Weird. That is weird. Weird. Fun times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead sorry 
so the the guy who ended up starting all of MK Ultra, his name is Sidney Gottlieb. Mm-hmm. He was a crazy dude. Of course. So his background, so he worked in uh, the Department of Agriculture, and he was studying soil. And then from there, he went to the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, mm-hmm. to develop tests to measure the presence of drugs in the body. So he was developing like drug tests. Okay. And then after that, he went to the National Research Council to work with hallucinogens and then went to the University of Maryland to study metabolisms of fungi. So if we think about like this guy's background, it's heavily, he's into mushrooms, first of all. Yeah, definitely. Hallucinogenics. Yeah. Um, drug testing in the body. Like these are all his different jobs. So it's so crazy like that he ended up doing there. this. And then anytime somebody says anything about like, oh, he's like studying like soil and stuff yeah. especially when he's the kind of guy that i think he is like it always seems dark for yeah. some reason that they're trying to like manipulate agriculture yeah yeah you know trying to become gods of sorts yes trying to figure out how all this stuff works because anytime you see somebody working on something like that it's like they're trying to figure out how to neutralize it for the other side like they're not figuring out how to like to to make soil better or whatever. You yeah, know? no. They're figuring out like what what how can we simulate like rainfall to like the yeah, salt the earth in yeah. China? You know, like how can yeah. we figure out how to do that? <laughs> For sure, it's always something crazy, right? But he joined the CIA in 1951, and then only two years later is when he started uh, MK Ultra because he was buds with the deputy director of the CIA. So he knew him personally and just basically got a free pass on everything. And just got to do whatever he wanted. Yeah. It was just green lighted all the time. And also the deputy director shared his belief that there was a way to influence and control the mind that could lead to human mastery is what it said. Ah, see, that's where my thing comes in when I talk about like doing it to myself Mm. because I had this long stint of doing acid. I say a long stint. It was like. It was like a couple years and there was one period where I did it for like 30 days straight, maybe 40. Yeah. And I did it all the time. And I would always, um, I would always, I, on the way to work, I worked at this telecommunications company and on the way to work, I would do it and I would listen to Steve Jobs the whole way. Hmm. And it was all Steve Jobs talking about the world and making it a better place and leaving your mark and like like just at, at at a time where he was like he got fired from apple so at that time he was like he was doing lsd himself he was the most spiritual uh he was the most grounded version of himself that you could possibly see and i just kept listening to that and like different motivational speakers mm-hmm. like every day and then i would go to work and like learn telecommunications it was like it was a weird thing that i would do I was I didn't do it on purpose, but then it became like on purpose, like I did it by accident. And then I just kind of kept doing it Mm -hmm. and I would meditate every single day. I would go to a creek and I'd meditate for 30 minutes while I was on it. Like it was like I do this very weird little ritual of doing that. But by the time I was done and then my dad actually got really sick at the end of it. So by the time I was done, I was like I was different. I was much different. That's so crazy. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. Even like people who knew me, they were like you changed wow yeah yeah, yeah. that's like (laughs) repeated messaging while on lsd yeah repeated messaging of like leave your mark and like do something good Hmm. do good things and like the things that you want are possible you know which is the same thing i preach to like my coaching clients now like everything's possible for Mm -hmm. you same thing i'll say to you like everything's (laughs) possible every every single thing you want is possible um, and that's not the acid talk. I've been sober for quite some time now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, yeah, I just feel like I did it to myself. It's a, yeah, it's a weird thing. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I was just you listening. MK altered yourself? Yeah, yeah. It, you I bettered can, yourself? I completely changed after that. Wow. It was weird. Really weird. That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So this crazy Sidney Gottlieb guy, we'll go back to him. Mm-hmm. So he would try LSD by himself and then on like other agents who were willing Sorry to interrupt. How do you how do you uh spell his name? Yeah, Sydney. S I D N E Y. Yeah. And then Gottlieb is G O T T L I E B. L I E B. E B. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Go ahead. So he was hunting for a truth serum, mm-hmm. and he actually went to do a um 
a speech at Princeton University and he was speaking about the project that he was working on but obviously everything was classified so he said it was a Soviet project and he spun it like oh isn't this so bad and the Soviets are horrible and they're doing XYZ and they're dosing people with LSD (laughs) like I, I don't know if he was like trying to gauge their reactions. That's exactly if, what I was going to say. Yeah. Or like what was going on? Because he was like, no, like it's Soviets, guys. It's all good. He's like, this is what the Soviets are doing. All right. They're doing this mind control thing. Yeah. <laughs> Ter- and everybody's like, terrible. Boo. <laughs> terrible. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Terrible. Mm-hmm. Absolutely horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so he was at first dosing people who were willing. And then he just started dosing everybody in the cia like he would just randomly pick a mark and dose them to see how they would react and apparently these people would like they weren't small doses so they would go like crazy and have hallucinations all day i don't know how long it stays in your body it's 16 hours wow it's a 16 hour trip that's why i said i I would do a whole commute to work it was like a two and a half hour commute yeah and i would be like peaking by the time I got off the buses and trains. Oh, my gosh. And then I would sit at this river when I was, like, like just uh, gone. And I would just sit at this river and listen to Steve Jobs and just, like, meditate. Wow. Yeah, it was, like, and then I'd get into work and it'd be, like, like That's everything crazy. was, like, a little shaky. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the the Matrix was, like, revealing itself. Wow. And then I would talk to this Jamaican lady, hmm. Maxine. She'd be, like, sit down, sit down, boy. <laughs> yeah, it was really scary. That's crazy. Hard experience. <laughs> He ended up giving um, LSD to an army bacteriologist at a retreat that they were all on, some kind of military retreat, Mm -hmm. which ended up leading to this guy's death because he had taken LSD. And then I think he's the one who like jumped out of a building or something. Wow. Yeah. And this guy had also asked previously, he wanted to resign his position because he didn't agree with the morality of MKUltra and the program and what they were doing to people. Wow. So it's like, of course, now Sidney Gottlieb is choosing this guy as a mark and then he ends up dead. Wow. So, yeah, maybe he didn't jump kind of thing. Well, yeah, or maybe he was just encouraged. That that gone. Yeah. Encouraged. Like that's what they were looking for is suggestibility. That's a good way to put it. Encouraged. Mm-hmm. This this uh, article calls him a torture in chi- uh, poisoner in chief. Yeah, that's a book. <laughs> oh, that's a book. Yeah, I forgot who wrote the book. I have it in here. Wow. Yeah, but somebody wrote a book about Sidney Gottlieb and how horrible he was. Wow. Uh, Stephen Kinzer is the author. That is wild. Yeah. That is wild. The Jeez. whole book title is called Poisoner in Chief: Sidney Gottlieb and the CIA Search for Mind Control. Wow. So like, you know what I'm realizing as you're telling me all this, like all of those stories and maybe you don't know because you've never been exposed to like the drug world or whatever. But for years, especially the 80s, 90s, it was like if you take stuff like that, you're going to jump out of a window. Yeah. I even heard that like, I don't know when, like it sounds weird to say when I was a kid, but whenever you hear about LSD, like I picture people thinking they can fly and jumping out of buildings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like all of these terrible things that we think about that particular substance comes from like and i you know maybe not but it seems like it comes from this time yeah of him dosing people just out of control yep wow so what else you got on him or just in general yeah well i can tell you a little bit about like that author and that book too oh really Go yeah ahead. so he uh the author went into it and described um described MK Ultra as a whole as a continuation of World War II era Japanese and German experimentation. Wow. So he believes that there is a continued Nazi agenda and that the CIA actually recruited former Nazi torturers and experimental surgeons to continue their experiments. Jeez. And he says the CIA brought Nazis to Fort Detrick in Maryland to instruct CIA officers on oh, well, we the use say, of sarin gas. I forgot. We got to say World War II bad guys. That's what we should oh, say. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. The bad guys. <laughs> it's okay. It's YouTube. I got to start doing more stuff on Rumble. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but whatever. Yeah. But yeah. 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 So he's thinking that there's a continued agenda. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? A lot of people say that. I mean, it's. I'm pr- I'm pretty sure it's proven that there were some of these World War II bad guys <laughs> in uh, NASA. 
Like I'm, yes. I'm pretty sure it's proven. If not the head, I don't know. I think it was Warren Vaughn something or other. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it. I don't like I wouldn't say as far as a continuation, but definitely, you know, every single, I think except for like China, they all took in as mm-hmm. many of those guys as they could because they were smart. Yes. They were smart. They understood things. They could continue their research. They could teach their scientists like mm-hmm. that elk and that 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 way of doing things, the way of looking at things. So yeah, and you know what's crazy? While I was doing research for something else, uh, we've spoken about Henry Kissinger before. Yes, yes, you told He's, me about him. Yeah, good old all American. Some people call him a like a like guilty of war crimes some people say he's a war hero but a, a patriot yes no. anyways <laughs> no. so while i was looking into him a little bit his name is heinz actually Heinz kitchener yeah wow he's german wow so he changed his name from heinz to henry wow yeah hmm hmm I'm not saying that he's a World War II bad guy, but he is German and changed his name and That's then was Secretary wild. of State and committed war crimes. So Whoa. Hmm. Surprise. And now he's like high up there. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like I almost want to say, I guess he's around the same age as Klaus, but yeah, because Klaus is like 80 something. 84. 84. I don't I know how old Kissinger is. I think Kissinger's around that same age, if not maybe 90. Yeah, they knew each other. Yeah. So like... And now they're all at the WEF, right? So yeah. Makes sense. Yes, yeah, the head of NASA. Yeah, Warner Von Braun. Yeah. He was he was a legit. He was that. <laughs> so, like, they were they were taking him. Every, every country was taking him. Yeah. Every country that could him. would, you know? Mm-hmm. Jeez. It's like right now if something happened with uh, China, you know, and there's all these True. guys working on AI, working on this, working on that. Every and their country space would be like, amazing too. Yeah, they'd be like, get over here. Yeah. They'd be like, you're fine. You're just going to work here. You and... just committed a little bit of a war crime. Yeah. <laughs> well, they'd be like, they would be like, you're a scientist. You're separated from that. Yeah. Like that, you're like, just that's, doing what you're told. That's how they do it. They just like, if you're a scientist, it's like, you're not actually the guys who are running around committing the atrocities. Like you're, you're doing the science. So it's like, we can bring a scientist on as as a refugee and a scientist is obviously going to be like, I didn't want to do any of this. Yeah. And, it, and honestly, when it comes to scientists, it's kind of true. They just kind of like, it seems like scientists just want to go where the money is. It's like, I want to work on this thing. Who's going to let me. Yeah. It seems like they'll go anywhere in the world. As long as somebody will let them work on their life's work. Yeah. And just pay for everything. Yes. Yeah. They just go where the grant money is. Yeah. Like a scientist would live here if we had the money. He'd just be like, okay. Like you mean in our house? Yeah. <laughs> he would just be like, <laughs> I was set like, up Canada a bed. Has scientists. <laughs> set up a bed. He'd be like, yeah. whatever. You guys paying everything? All right. <laughs> That's so funny. True though. What else you got? What else you got? Um. Oh well, there's like the um, whole Canadian aspect of this too, because it wasn't just in the states. Yeah. True. And you had that. Uh, you have a video on Dr. Cameron. Or something um, like that? Yeah, somebody who's a survivor mm. of Dr. It's the daughter of a survivor of Dr. Cameron. So she literally, you know, saw her dad one way, then saw him another way. Here it is. Oh, let's just switch over there. Switch screens for you guys. And my father was a victim of Dr. Cameron. He was a 27-year-old, healthy, skier, canoeer, very athletic, and he had asthma. They told him if he went to the Allen Memorial, they could cure his asthma. My father, Charles, was a patient of Dr. Cameron's. He had a trigeminal neuralgia, it's called, where there's a pain in the temple that radiates into the jaw that apparently is excruciatingly painful. They told him that it was psychosomatic, which it's not, but in those days, what did they know? So they sent him to a shrink. This shrink that he went to was working with Cameron, although we didn't know, so he he put my father right into the program i was having trouble with my parents my father and my stepmother decided to put me in the allen memorial institute they had no idea what went on in there i was 16 when i was there dr cameron pursued a concept he called depatterning 
which was meant to reduce patients to an infantile psychological state wherein doctors could take advantage of the person's cognitive vulnerability to attempt to rebuild their mind under the doctor's control. A popular method of choice to achieve this was yeah. called psychic driving. Mm -hmm. The day that my father was brought to the hospital, they immediately put him on insulin uh, to put him into like an insulin coma. They took clips from the interview with the shrink and put it on tape to run a loop under his pillow while he was put into the sleep treatment. He also was put in an insulin coma for 36 days with a, with a recording beside him uh, saying that your mother hates you over and over and over and over and over. That was beside my bed constantly, repeated between 250,000 and 500,000 times. Another common method was the use of extreme Page Russell electroshock therapy. Jeez. Yeah, yeah and I that's just... not uncommon from what I've heard of what happened there. Isn't that crazy? That's wild. That's wild. And again, back to what I was saying before, I would do that to myself. I would have yeah. recordings. I even have it to this day where I have recordings of myself saying positive things. And mm -hmm. I'll listen to it over and over again. Well, apparently it works. Yeah, yeah, I think it does. I've done it on like I, one time I did like 14 grams of mushrooms and like I just sat in the dark and put headphones on and just listened to myself, tell myself good things. Hmm. <laughs> That's why she married me, folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wild though, wild. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry, yeah. I just wanted to play that. No, that's pretty much uh, what he did. But the CIA funded like over $500,000 a year wow. into this program. And it was um, based in Montreal. Jeez. So they experimented with paralytic drugs as well as electroconvulsive therapy at like 35 to 40 times the normal power. Hmm. So back then, like we all know the mental health care wasn't what it is today. And it was very misunderstood. Yeah, of course. And people just thought they could like shock your brain into being normal again. Of course. Yeah. So they were doing that for sure. But then on these people, they just cranked it up for some reason. Wow. And the experiments were often on patients who came in for kind of considered minor things like anxiety disorders and postpartum depression. So they would take these people who would come in for these kind of minor things that mm -hmm. they just need some help with mm -hmm. and they would put them in comas exactly like they said in the video yeah and then either play these tapes or i don't know what else they would do to them wow. but they'd wake up like completely different people wow like i'm just past the cia because i am a high performance coach and i do like focus on habit formation so much of our lives you at home is dictated by what we see and do over and over again. Yeah. Like if you have parents who are telling you negative things over and over again, it like it sets in. Yeah. Because even as you're telling me this, it's like my whole life, like I wasn't in a coma, but I was very depressed and I would listen to Dave Chappelle every single day. <laughs> and I'm I'm a funny guy. That's true. You I'm, are. I'm really funny. I'm real <laughs> and I'm really good at stand up. Like I can just get on stage and just do stand up. And it's like how much of that is like me and how much of it is like me listening to that and my mom watching stand up every single day and yeah how like it's so weird and it's like i do this and it's like i got a picture of joe rogan behind me and it's like i listen to podcasts every day like how much of it is like me wanting to do things mm -hmm. and how much of it is what you see and hear every single day it's yeah. very weird very very weird yeah you Odd gotta to be careful about. who you keep around you friends too not just parents yeah yeah true if everybody's always negative how do you think you're gonna be yeah yeah very very true very true mm -hmm. wow but yeah go ahead sorry yeah. so <laughs> all this horrible stuff happened in canada as well mm -hmm. um and then people were even waking up from these comas thinking that their interrogators were their parents wow so like they said in the video, I guess they were putting people into an infantile state. Yeah. And then when you wake up, probably the first thing you see, you assume is like, your parent. Like a baby bird. Like a, yeah. Or even like a baby human being born. Yeah. And they're like put on the mom's chest and they bond. Yeah. Whew. Man, imagine, imagine thinking it's that okay, that that's okay to do that to a person, to like yeah. take that kind of liberty with them. Yeah, it's crazy. <sighs> And then he went on to become the first chairman of the World Psychiatric Association. Oh, that's good. So he was like lauded for his good efforts. Yeah. Yeah, right? 
crazy. And then when he died, his family went through and burnt all of his documents that he had. So nobody could get a hand on anything. For sure. Probably because they, I don't know, wanted to either protect his memory or they were embarrassed and just wanted it to be done. Yeah, for sure. They're Maybe, yeah, you know, it's like there's two ways of thinking about it. It's like maybe they were embarrassed, right? And they were just like, or maybe he had something, or three ways. Maybe he had just wild things he wrote. He's like, I'm going to take over the world. This is how <laughs> we're going to take over the world and this and that. Maybe he had something like that. Or maybe they were just like, this needs to stop. Yeah. Like whatever he's doing, like from what we're reading, we need to get rid of this. And hopefully this will put an end to whatever they're doing. Yeah, right. Like maybe they were like, this is wrong. This is very wrong. I hope wrong. so. Jeez. So crazy. Can you imagine like being a kid and even like as an adult? reading that about your parent yeah and all, all the things that they did and they probably had no idea yeah for sure not you don't share that stuff with your kids especially since it's like a cia funded program it would be totally classified yeah yeah true but then the canadian government ended up settling with all of these victims and they really? only paid out 100k each wow yeah. <laughs> only 100k each. yeah to 127 victims and there's so many more. So that's like what, ten point or twelve million or something? Even like I'm just gonna I'm gonna find this Joe Rogan clip because he kinda talks about it from a different angle. But yeah, just nuts. Let me just play this clip. I'm O'Neill. He's actually Fitzsimmons is uh, Greg Fitzsimmons is uh next door neighbor. <laughs> Whoa. For like 20 fucking years. It's mm. a crazy story. Fitzsimmons is the one who told me about the guy. He said, hey, I got this neighbor. He's been working on this Charles Manson book for 20 fucking years. It's been his obsession. It's ruined his life. He he, he like had to give money back to publishers because he didn't finish the book. Because he, he developed so much material. Because he got into it from the perspective of like it was an anniversary thing. The anniversary of the murders. And he was writing this book. It's called Chaos. I can't recommend it enough. It's a fucking fantastic book. And so as he's writing the book, he uh, realizes like, oh my God, the whole story, it, it was originally an article and they turned it into a book, but he's like, the whole story of Manson's wrong. But what's really about is the CIA giving LSD to hippies. And yeah. he was one of the guys they experimented with. It was oh. all part of the MKUltra experiments. I didn't was know that. 100%. There was some fuckery involved oh, in yeah. Manson because he kept what? getting out of jail easy, and the, the the sheriffs would all say the same thing. We're t this is above my pay grade. They had to let him out, so he'd get he would like they, they, he was involved in murders, he was involved in robbery, all kinds of crazy shit. They let him out of jail, and they Tom were just giving him acid. They not only did they give Bro, him acid, they, they taught you. him how to use acid to manipulate people and convince them to commit murders. Wow. Damn. Yeah. The CIA trained Charles Manson, I think, allegedly, maybe not. Maybe somebody who was a rogue agent in the CIA. This is not official government policy. They would never allow this. They're gonna get you. Somebody did it. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna get you. Yeah, man. Fuck it's out. It's out. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. They're going to get you. They can try. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he stays heavily armed. There's a lot of... In Texas. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of Navy SEALs inside his studio. Like, apparently, oh, there's, really? like, a huge gym. And then there's just bodyguards and a lot of guys who just go there to work out. And they're, like, all ready That's to very go. smart. Yeah, yeah. He stays mm -hmm. on the good side of those people. But, yeah, just, just so I just wanted to play that because it's, like, you know, even even Manson a little bit and with Manson it like makes so much sense if you ever yeah. seen if you ever seen like an interview with him he's like gone his, oh he's yeah his brain totally is crazy. just and it's and it's crazy but also at the same time like some things he says are like intelligent it's very very weird very very weird just watching him operate yeah but so. if you think about like the the Manson story too and how he convinced all these seemingly yeah. normal people yeah, 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 to convict commit murders with him like how would you do that yeah Without something like LSD and suggestion. Very true. Very, very true. So that makes a lot of sense. Wild. Wild. Is that all your notes? That is all my notes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to play that last clip because it's just, uh, yeah, there's there's many ways to think of, of that whole situation. And even when you think back or, you know, you know, it, I know most of us weren't alive, but if you know anything about the 50s and 60s, 70s. How much of that was influenced by this? Mm -hmm. You know, there could be a lot of it that was influenced by all this. So, 
I was also thinking uh, while while you were talking, I was thinking um, maybe we could call this this my my day off. Oh, yeah. that's fun. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I like it. I'm trying to think of what they, you guys tell us in the comments. What do you think about this whole MK Ultra thing? And what do you think that this show should be called? We got date night news because, you know, this is what we do on our date nights. We mm-hmm. have conversations like this. And then we have uh, Let's Get Weird. And then we have My Day Off. You guys let me know out of those three. What, what do you think is good? Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. 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 We're trying to keep it a little short, but I wanted to make it a little much longer than what my usually video, my usual videos are. And just so, you know, do a little deeper, little variation. I'm trying to bring you guys as much value as I possibly can. And this is one of the ways. So there's going to be this show. I'm trying to find other shows that I can do with different people, different opinions. Um, hopefully I can have somebody who's almost like a, anybody who brings me a story. I want to sit down with you, interview you, talk about it kind of the same way we did this. Just, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to figure it all out for you guys and just, uh, make that subscribe really worth something to you. So I guess that's it. That's it. All right, guys, this has been great. Hit that subscribe button. If you found any value to this and I am out. Oh, oh yeah, you got to stop this.